What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema, and welcome to this episode of 31 Days of Horror, going through my top five horror directors. Man, this is a tough list, guys. This is base. This is basically a Mount Rushmore plus one director, right? So we're gonna all have our favorites. Mine are not going to be in line with yours, and that is for sure. So we're going to have a good discussion in the comments. So drop your top five horror directors in those comments below. We'll have a good talk about it and all that jazz. Now, I think of horror directors as a lot that goes into it. Their style. That's a big thing. Do I like the style? Do I like what they're bringing, what they're conveying? Um, how well the directing actors goes into a good director, right? Another thing is their filmography. How many good movies do they have? Do I enjoy going back to these movies time and time again. You know what I mean? And I'm talking to horror directors, so I'm not really concerned about how diverse they are, like how well they can go into um, other genres, but that can be a factor. That can be a factor too. But yeah, this this is going to be a, a a lot of fun, guys, and everything like that. So let's just, let's just get into this ranking. So number five was the hardest one for me. There's two directors, and I am ultimately going with Wes Craven at number five. Love Wes Craven. I mean, he made one of my favorite horror films of all time with Nightmare on Elm Street. He reinvented the slasher genre twice. And that's a big reason why he's on this list. What he did with, you know, the golden age of slashers that was getting stale. He brings out Nightmare on Elm Street with such unique creativity. Fast forward to 96, The Scream. He does it again, giving this something with this meta approach with the uh, horror genre he always has really fun characters he's a great storyteller but where he falls on number five for me is his filmography i'm not the biggest fan as a whole of everything i'm not a i'm not that much of a fan of people under the stairs um i love nightmare on Elm street i'm not a big fan of scream i like scream i think it's okay but i'm not the biggest fan of it I actually like Shocker, even though it goes nuts in the third act, but I really like that movie. But a lot of his other movies, I'm not that big of a fan of. Like, The Hills of Eyes is okay, but I like the remake more. The Last House on the Left is really not my thing, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I think he's a great storyteller. He definitely earns a notch for a great horror director, for sure, right? Because what he... I love Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, the guy created Freddy Krueger this story you know what i mean and all that kind of stuff he's given us some of the most terrifying scenes in the horror in night on elm street all even though i'm not a big scream fan that opening the scream is legendary it will forever be remembered with the phone calls and everything like that like you know what i mean he's he is a great horror director for sure a great storyteller he really goes in and he really shows you the the trauma of everything he doesn't really hold back like at last house on the left with the hills have eyes. He's like that, man. He never held back on a lot of his things. Granted, I still got to see some other Wes Craven movies. So once I see his whole filmography, maybe I'm going to change my mind about that. For, but for now, he'll sit at number five. Coming at number four is James Wan. Now, like I said, a lot of you are probably throwing tomatoes at me right now. I just returned to James Wan films a hell of a lot more. Um, other than, you know, like Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, I love The Conjuring 1. I love The Conjuring 2. I love Insidious. I mean, uh, you know, what he did with Death Sentence. I know it's not pure horror, but it's horrific. You know, The Death Sentence is one of his best movies. He switches gears to Aquaman, which was okay and everything, but I love him in the horror genre. Malignant, what he did with Malignant, you know, he's it was Saw. I mean, the original Saw, he's a really great director that goes back into a, a 70s gritty kind of feel. He's not always the best with character, the way he handles character and everything like that. But I do like J James Wan's old school approach of more nuance. And he, he, he just crafted, he crafts really scary scenes, man. He really does. Really anxiety induced, tense, tension filled scenes. He's really good at that. And he can really show a lot of heart in his movies, like in The Conjuring 2. That movie's basically a love story masked as a horror film. But he was really on a roll, right? When he did Insidious, then he did Conjuring, then Conjuring 2. Recently, uh, with the horror uh, genre with Malignant, he's he's 
death sentence, like I said before, with Kevin Bacon, man. He just he's he's done some very impressive films, man. And he could switch it up a bit, like I said, with Aquaman, but he also did one of the Fast and Furious movies, number seven, I think. So he does have a knack for directing action, directing chase scenes. Like the chase scene in Malignant was really good. The chase scene in Death Sentence was really good. But yeah, I just I've always been a big fan of James Wan ever since. It was actually ever since Death Sentence, really. I like Saw and everything, but Death Sentence really made me like, oh, wow. And then we did Insidious and all these other movies and stuff like that. But yeah, I got to get my take my hat off for James Wan. Coming at number three is John Carpenter. Now, I know this guy is going to be a lot of your guys' favorites for sure. I wouldn't argue John Carpenter being at number one. John Carpenter's awesome. He, he, you know, in a lot of ways, he is my favorite director with this style. I like how he creates mood and atmosphere extremely well. He gives us fun movies, movies we can have a good time with. His legacy will be Halloween. I think that's what he'll be remembered for is Halloween. But I think his real masterpiece is the thing. Unfortunately, it didn't get the credit at the time. And I think if this movie would have captured audiences in 82, his career would have went on a different trajectory. But he always makes, it's like Kurt Russell says, he always makes movies seem bigger th than they are. Like when you watch a John Carpenter movie, you think it has a much bigger budget than it really does. He can make, you know, he makes a lot of use out of his budgets. He casts extremely well. His his working relations with Kurt Russell, with with the thing. I mean, the movie, the made for TV movie, um, Elvis, Escape from New York. You know, he's in he's in um, Big Trouble in Little China. Like, but his, you know, but with Halloween, as if we were talking as as a horror director, I mean, he crafted something very simple, effective. The way he does his own music, he really saved a lot of money there. But the thing is amazing the thing is masterfully directed especially when you think of all those those breadcrumbs he leaves throughout it and how he uses like paranoia and everything like that characters in the thing that's a real staple of john carpenter a lot of his movies he has a lot of great characters in his movies i mean he may have not have been in the the hollywood level eyes of like great oscar winning movies but he went on a freaking run a run Halloween, Escape from New York, then The Thing, then Christine, Starman. I mean, Jeff Bridges got an Oscar for Starman, I believe, or a nominee, I think. Starman was like a road romance movie with science fiction mixed in there. You know what I mean? He's a great science fiction director, too, right? I absolutely love freaking Starman. He does Big Trouble in Little China, you know, a kung fu action movie. You know what I mean? He... he he can switch gears. He can switch gears a lot. Um, but it's it's the way he'll utilize his music, the lighting. He's a master of mood and atmosphere, though. He knows how to create the atmosphere with the music. He can he knows how to create mood. And that's where his talents really lie to me. Really memorable characters. He always stayed in that kind of B-movie lane, but maybe he was just ahead of his time. I know the thing was ahead of its time. You know, the way he wanted to craft the thing was with like, no, I don't want to see a man in a suit. We're going to make this shit. We're going to scare the fuck out of people, man. This is going to like unsettle you to your core. And, you know, he is a great, great director. Fun dialogue, too. The way he writes his dialogue. I would say his later stuff, maybe not my favorite. Man, you can look at this guy's filmography. He has a lot of good ones, man. So a lot of great movies for sure. Coming at number two is the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock. I love this guy's style, the nuance, all about story, all about character, all about suspense. Everything is so memorable in an Alfred Hitchcock movie. I mean, he does, he does Psycho in 1960, and he was a seasoned director by that point, but knew exactly what he wanted to do, knew exactly how he wanted to man manipulate an audience. And he was great for that. He knew how to manipulate the audience. You know what I mean? Everyone borrows from Hitchcock. And that's why he's here. Everyone borrows from Hitchcock. I mean, John Carpenter borrows from Hitchcock. James Wan borrows from Hitchcock. Everyone does. And I can go back. I haven't seen still a lot of his movies. And he's on this list. Why? Psycho, my favorite horror film of all time. Shadow of a Doubt is one of the best movies I've seen. Rear Window. 
Vertical maybe not be the best, but I still really do like how he crafted it. It is a well-made movie and all that. Rope, Dial M for Murder, The Birds. I mean, the list goes on and on what this guy did, man. And, you know, it's he and it's funny that he always, you know, always had blondes as his lead. He loved blondes. He always liked the work on the back lot. He didn't like on location shooting. He's kind of a quirky kind of character, man. And he did the Alfred Hitchcock presents and all that kind of stuff. But there was no one really quite like Hitchcock, man. You know, um, it may have not been a slow burn approach back then. But the way we look at his movies now it was very nuanced and a really slow burn approach approach revealing things slowly moving the camera slowly building up the tension spending time with characters just a master at that and you know he always said it was almost it, it's not the bang it's the anticipation of the bang right it's the build up so missing in this day and age man everyone wants us to see the blood the guts and the gore and and stuff you know once you build the evil you know Build that evil up so that you're so terrified. Then unleash it. You know what I mean? Um, I love Hitchcock. I absolutely love Hitchcock. And I like when filmmakers borrow from Hitchcock or where they pay a complete homage to Hitchcock. Like The Sixth Sense is very Hitchcock. Like The Others is very Hitchcock. Like What Lies Beneath is, is, is Robert Zemeckis playing in the Hitchcock sandbox. Going, here you go. This is what Hitchcock would be if you had technology. You know, with the phone, cellular phones and stuff like that. Love Hitchcock. Awesome. But coming at number one, guys, and I know a lot of you may not agree with this. A lot of you may think he hasn't put his time in yet, but I don't care what anyone says. Mike Flanagan is my favorite horror director, my favorite filmmaker of all time. And what really cemented him in was The Haunting of Hill House. That was really like the, when I saw that show, I watch it every year now. I go, this guy is a master that is a masterpiece. That is the best horror piece, show, movie, anything I've ever seen, ever. It's because Mike Flanagan doesn't just present a killer, chase after you. That's not scary to him. It's the real life shit that's scary. That's what he does. He always has things in his movies that's the, the, the real life shit that scares us. And he's another Hitchcock kind of guy who uses more psychological stuff in it. It's more the buildup, the tension, the way he he takes actors who you haven't seen or maybe their careers aren't going well, um, from our point of view anyway, and brings them back, like what he did with Henry Thomas. Henry Thomas is a fantastic actor. You know what I mean? Brings him back in Hill House, uses him all these other projects, the movies he used them in. Oculus, one of his earlier works, just so underrated, but showed the skill of this guy. Then he does this home evasion movie like Hush, adding something different into the genre by making this woman, you know, uh, a mute and she's deaf. You go, look at the ideas you can play with here. So he comes up with these great ideas, this great sense of storytelling. He's immaculate with character. This guy knows how to use a character, how to run with characters, his, his monologues. The way he utilizes his monologues is unbelievable. The music he puts in his movies. I mean, the crew this guy must have, the people he trusts on making all this stuff, is it must, must they must be incredible to work with because he just has a vision. He knows how to execute. There's a lot more he has to do, but he's proven, like, look, he did a sequel to The Shining. He took that on and and people loved it, man. It's an amazing movie. His approach and his care he takes into other properties. You know what I mean? There was this failed horror movie, Ouija. They want to do a second one. They bring Flanagan. Good film. Pretty decent film. Does Doctor Sleep. Good film. He's been hired on to do The Exorcist. He's now the guy that you go, save us. Save this. And now he's switching gears a bit. With the life of Chuck that will be coming out. It was just played at film festivals and people say it's amazing. It's on the other side of the spectrum. A real joyful movie because his movies, his shows get really dark, man. And his shows, man. His shows are masterpieces. Like I said, The Haunting of Ale House. Then he does Midnight Mass. um, The Midnight Club. With great adaptation. More of a producer on that one. Directed a couple episodes. Um, same with um, the Edgar Allan Poe one, The Fall of the House of Usher. Fantastic. 
He always has fantastic imagery. The casting, the people he trusts he uses and all these things. Just amazing. His wife, Kate Siegel, I think she's an amazing actress, man. And obviously the way he directs her, she just really, you know, pulls out those performances or he's pulling it out of her really well. But Flanagan, man, his, his sense of character, the dialogue, the way he can adapt, the imagery he gives us, it's just moody. He really knows how to frame a shot. He knows how to draw you in and get you. He's not a jump scare kind of director, but when he puts one in, you don't expect it. And bang. Gets you every single time. I just like his... I love slow burn approach, I guess. I really love slow burn approach, but to me, Flanagan could do no wrong right now, man. I mean, I, he doesn't have one stinker out there that I've seen yet, man. I absolutely love Mike Flanagan. That is my list, guys, grazing over my top five horror directors. My Mount Rushmore, if you will. But what about you guys? Let me know in the comments what your favorite horror directors are. We'll have a good discussion in those comments. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. It goes a long way. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. There's a big video at the bottom there for you guys to check out. Go check it out. Enjoy the channel. I'll see you next time, and I'll see you in the movies. Cheers.